Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now today is a little bit of a different one. We are in central London, as you can see. Uh, I thought I would do a very small video that will probably only take a few hours to film as it is quite late in the day and hopefully the darkness doesn't get the better of us. Um, it probably will. It's about half two right now. Sun is set to go down about four, um, but we'll try our very best. So the whole point of today's video is going to be a guide to car spotting in London and general just sort of looking for cars in central London and what areas to go to, what techniques to use, what streets to go to, what to look out for and yeah just general tips, tricks, things that I've learned over the last few years on what to do in London and how to have the best results with your day. So first things first, the thing I would do personally, what I've done for all these years, is get off the train at Sloan Square, which is behind here. Sloan Square, Underground Station, they are district and circle line. Uh, it's the best place to start off at because you've got Belgravia just down there, you've got Sloan Street just there, you've got uh, all the side roads behind Sloan Street just in front of me, which is where we're about to go now. It's just the best place to start. You've got three huge areas to start yourself off with. There is there is a good chance the second you get off that train, as I say, you will be greeted by something special. It's not that hard. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna get into it now. So yes, as I was saying, we're gonna get started looking around and give you some sort of tips and places to go and things like that. The uh, the first place I would suggest going once you get off the train at Sloan Square is a place called Simmons Street, Sismond Street. I'll get a clip of the street sign. But um, yeah, I would recommend just walking down here because it's, you know, lovely houses. There's cars parked everywhere. The whole road is parking for the people that live here. Uh, and therefore you tend to get some nice cars. Uh, around here there isn't that great stuff, so it's more just maximizing your chances when walking to the better areas. Um, and I think around here is probably your best bet. Um, you know, you're not gonna see too much, but if you like interesting cars, this tends to be a good place. If you like luxury four by fours, this tends to be a good place. And I think that probably brings us to our first main tip don't get sidetracked, uh, don't get sidetracked by half decent cars because you will end up spending hours walking around this area looking at cars that you think are quite cool, not realising that around the corner there's going to be stuff that's a lot better, uh, stuff like that, Suzuki Jimny, uh, I would normally spend ages looking at that but around here I can't because I know that right around the corner there could be something better, so don't waste your time, that's, that's tip number one I think. <laughs> So for me personally, I would say my next major tip, if you can call them that, is use your locations to your strengths. Uh, what I mean by that is pick your locations going by what cars you like. So, you know, if you've got a certain taste in a certain type of thing, pick your location carefully and you will get more of that thing. If you like hypercars and luxury cars, go to places like Harrods and some of the luxury hotels. If you like weirder, older stuff, pick a side street, pick an old, you know, place where people actually live. You will see weirder things. That is the, the easiest thing I can possibly give you. Now that is not me saying that if you go to Harrods, if you go to the luxury hotels, you won't see more niche cars, but it helps. <laughs> it helps to go to places where you can expect to find that stuff. Like if you go to these areas where people live, where people park their cars, where they, park them <laughs> you will see things like this old Rolls Royce and this Taycan Sport Turismo parked next to each other outside this quiet street and the photos will be beautiful that is the thing that is the trade-off if you want to see cooler cars more expensive cars whatever you have to go to the hotels and when you go to the hotels your photos are going to be worse there's no hotel parking in London that makes for a particularly nice photo but all these areas Lovely, so if you get lucky walking down here, 
you've won. Um, and obviously, it's it's like picking a needle out of a haystack around these streets. You know, London in general isn't like that. If you want to see cars come here, you will see cars. But depends where you go. And for me personally, this is my preference. I like seeing weirder stuff and this is where you find it. It's the best. So I've just come out of Cadogan Square, which is down here. When you come out of that turning, you can either go left to Harrods or right to Sloan Street. Um, I always head right because down there directly parallel is Sloan Street and a bunch of different squares. And, and also there is an entrance to Harrods there as well. You just tend to get a lot more parked up around there. So that is my choice. But if you want to, you can head right and head straight to Harrods and you'll end up at Sloan Street anyway. It's all about preference, but uh, yeah. That's, that's what's next. So the main way I like to go is through Hans Place, which is this big sort of circular road with cars parked all the way around it. Um, it just makes things a lot easier to like navigate round. Um, when you get to the main exit over there, you get a main view of Harrods. And when you get over to an exit that's over there or this one, you get a main view of Sloan Street. So there's no way to go wrong. Um, just cause I can't bother to walk over there. M5 comp there, if it'll focus, M5 comp. Um, yeah, so we're now heading towards Sloan Street. Um, you know, there's, there's actually not parking on Sloan Street anymore, as far as I know. Um, it is Sunday, so I think there's free parking most places. But um, mm, yeah, I think there's road works, so you don't tend to get that many cars parked down there, but it's always worth a look because you never know what's going to be driving down there. But, you know, it's all one big lottery, really, with London. Like, every everywhere you will see cars. Like, you know, there's a G-Wagon going past now. You will see stuff everywhere but it's about how good that stuff will be. Here's a uh, pretty cool one for the Porsche nerds that may or may not subscribe to my channel. Uh, tan interior, which is lovely on these. Black paint, black wheels. Uh, these are the turbo wheels, even though it's not a Macan turbo, it's just a Macan S. And on Romanian number plates, which is a rare one that you don't see very often in London. You get a lot of Qatar, Dubai, things like that, but some guy from Romania has bought his very coolly specced Macan. Appreciate that. Very nice. Speaking of uh, different number plates, this uh, Defender. All the way from Ukraine. Pretty cool. Shout out to this Ukrainian guy for bringing his Defender over here. Awesome. So I'm now on the famous Sloan Street. Uh, back in the day, we used to sit on these two green boxes right here and the road would be absolutely swamped with cars parked either side. But nowadays, not so much. Uh, so if you ever hear people going on about Sloan Street being the hub for great cars, there's a lot of nice cars around here because there's nice shops, but not so much on this actual street. So don't, don't waste your time sitting here for hours anymore. Those years are gone unless you've got a time machine that brings you back to 2016. No good, avoid Sloan Street. That is tip number four or three. I don't know, I've lost count. Before I forget, one quick reason to not avoid Sloan Street is this pub right here. Uh, when you're car spotting, obviously you will need food and drink uh, that isn't an extortionate price because we can't all eat out in Harrods. That pub on Sloan Street there does a very competitively priced burger. Uh, that's very good for lunch and obviously the whole place is covered in windows so you can still look out them and look down on Sloan Street and enjoy everything round here um, but yeah that is another good point that I probably should have mentioned food you will struggle to get a decently priced meal that isn't McDonald's so if you're coming car spotting a lot and you don't want to keep eating takeaways you might want to start bringing your own lunch uh, but yeah that that pub on sloan street is pretty good for a burger or chips or whatever it's good i've had many meals there but let's be honest the second you sit down to eat food you want to get back up again to go and look for cars that you might be missing so we'll pretend that you want to sit and eat food and i've totally lost my train of thought because i've just seen something really cool <laughs> i'll go i'll go and show you now it's over here 
This is the best thing I'm gonna see today. Screw the Rolls Royces, screw the Ferraris, whatever. This, this is so good. This is the Citroen Ami. I've wanted to see one of these for a long time, but being where I live, these aren't particularly popular because they are great as an electric city car. Uh, ignore the sign that the Citroen probably crashed into. <laughs> these things are awesome. They're two seats, uh, reverse doors like a Rolls Royce. They start from something ridiculous at like 20 pounds a month. Um, yeah, they're really, really cool. And shout out to the person that bought this because it's hilarious. They've got a top speed of 28 miles an hour, I think. They range for about six grand if you want to buy it outright. I love it. So we've just left Sloan Street now. And once we get to the top of the road, we have turned right. Uh, once you have turned right, directly to the right of you will be the Park Tower Hotel. Uh, that one's always worth a check. Uh, if you go down past it, there's parking behind the park tower. Uh, always good to check it, you never know. I just had a check and there was nothing there, so I didn't feel the need to film because all the security guards would probably think I was a little bit weird filming their hotel when there's no cars parked out the front. Um, and that brings me to actually another point to remember. When you're in London, don't feel weird about filming. Uh, not only is it a capital city, so everyone is filming, everyone is taking photos of everything, so you're not going to look particularly abnormal. Um, uh, I don't really know how to explain it. People around here know about car spotting. No one thinks it's odd. In your local area, it might be a bit weird to get a big camera out and start filming people's cars, but around here it just doesn't happen. There's no, there's no weird looks to it at all. People come over here a little bit for that as well as for a holiday and being able to bring their car out with them people do it a little bit for the attention who doesn't like a nice picture of their car while they're on holiday and i don't know it's just part of the culture there's a little bit of a, a car spotting culture in knightsbridge and mayfair and it's accepted and it's loved and no one around you will be thinking that you're in any way odd for doing it and therefore just enjoy it don't worry about what you're doing don't not film in certain situations because you think people are going to think you're weird just do it because you'll regret it and you'll go oh i'm I, I saw this car but i didn't film it because it was weird or whatever don't don't do that there's loads of us there's car spotters everywhere i've seen like 10 of them already Another great place to go when you're on your way to Mayfair is to peel off to the right to this place, the Berkeley Hotel, where there is lovely parking out the front, all these skylights above here, and well, yeah, just plenty of cars parked out the front. Today there was a nice M3 and a Rolls Royce, but other times I've seen, you know, Bugattis, hypercars, plenty of stuff. Uh, you just never know what you're gonna get. Please keep in mind at the time of me filming this video, we're very close to Christmas, we're very close to winter. So there's not that many cars out, but I thought I would show you it in a worst case scenario to keep your hopes low, but you know, expect more. If you come here in summer, you're gonna get more, but I still encourage people to go because the more you come, the more stuff's gonna be out. It's it's as simple as that. The more you look, the more you find. So don't, don't miss out on opportunities to see cool stuff just because it's a little bit cold. So continuing the walk to Mayfair, um, another great place to check is the Wellesley Hotel. That was the uh, place that I just showed with the two Rolls Royces. That was a lovely uh, Wraith. Yeah, Wraith. Wraith Black Badge. Um, very nice. And we've got coming up uh, another hotel. I've forgotten the name of this one. Uh, I think it's called the Grovesnar or the, uh, I don't know. But it's this one here. Um, it's right on Hyde Park Corner. Um, you tend to get some cars parked right outside the front. Uh, today there is a, another Rolls Royce standard. You'll get bored of the Rolls Royces, S-Classes, G-Wagons pretty quick if you're not before you come here. Um, you'll realize that pretty much instantly uh, the second you come to London for car spotting if you've never been before. You'll stop taking photos of Rolls Royces after about 10 seconds. Um, it's ridiculous. Like right now, right where I'm standing, I've got two over there, one there. There's a phantom in traffic just over there. It's, they're everywhere. It's not rare. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll, you'll see about a million pound worth of Rolls Royces within the first 
15 seconds of getting off the train, I think. So <laughs> avoid that. Avoid taking photos of every Rolls Royce you see because you'll very quickly run out of storage. I did that the first trip I made. Uh, and yeah, the Rolls Royce has got the better of me. Uh, there's another one there. It's, it's ridiculous, they're everywhere. <laughs> so next up on our sightseeing of car spotting locations, we have Hyde Park Corner. Uh, it's basically one big roundabout. It's it's mayhem. You will get some cars here, but you know you have to do your waiting because the traffic is very slow. So if you want to sit here for half an hour and look out for stuff in the summer, great. Uh, I do it every now and again. There is some good stuff that turns up here, but the the main thing that this leads onto that people do like looking at is uh, Hyde Park. Um, and Park Lane that runs next to it. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Hyde Park. Um, sorry for all the noise, by the way. It's very noisy in London. Um, yeah, so you've got Park Lane running next to Hyde Park. This road is very busy, constant flows of traffic in and out of Knightsbridge and Mayfair. It is the main point of which Knightsbridge connects to Mayfair, and therefore you get a lot of cars. So it's a pretty good bet to just sit here and wait, really, because you will see stuff. It's pretty much guaranteed, which is good. We like guarantee because the whole thing with car spotting, as I've said, is chance. So if we can eliminate some of that chance, that's good with me. What we got? I hear some engines. So we are now in Mayfair, uh, well just getting into it. Uh, the next spot that I would recommend you all go to is where I am now. Uh, you've got the side of traffic from Park Lane heading to Mayfair, the side of traffic on Park Lane heading to Knightsbridge. So you've got a nice all round here with a little crossroad here, loads of people stand here to film stuff. You'll see loads of clips on YouTube of people getting videos here. Um, it's a great spot, you know, you've got grass, there's plenty of places to sit, there's a wall over there that you can sit on. It's lovely in summer, you know, you've got the trees and everything, there's a little shop, like a petrol station over there. Um, there's, yeah, it's just plenty to see. We've got a, a weird one here, Ineos Grenadier. Haven't seen a Grenadier in a while, but um, yeah, so this is a great spot to stand. You, you will see cars. Um, like I keep saying, it's not a busy day today. It's cold, it's winter, it's dark. You're not gonna see much. But um, in summer, this is the place to be. Um, I'm just sorry that I haven't got much to show you today. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my next spot. Try it out, you will have luck. Now the next spot I would say to come to is directly next to Park Lane where I've just been standing to film that last bit is the Dorchester Hotel. There is plenty of parking spaces out the front. In the summer there's loads parked there. Pretty simple one really. There's not many people that don't know about the Dorchester Hotel. Um, it's a very famous hotel and therefore you get some very special cars. That's about it. So the next spot we have once you've gotten away from the Dorchester Hotel and walked a little bit further into Mayfair is Mount Street. Now Mount Street is quite a famous road because it's full of plenty of expensive shops and cafes and restaurants and pubs and things like that. But there is again, as always, plenty of cars parked down here. It's one of those roads with parking all the way down the road, both sides, so plenty to see. Um, there's never a dull moment down here. Uh, you know, just walking down here now, what I can see is Rolls Royce Cullinan right here. If we look over the other side of the road, we've got Maybach, GLE, GLS, whatever they're called. Behind this Mercedes, we've got a 911, 997. We've got uh, just behind the gray Cullinan, we've got another Rolls Royce, uh, another Cullinan, another Range Rover. There's plenty down here. It's every other car. Um, it's non-stop. There's a, uh, a Khan Design Defender next to me, which is pretty cool. Uh, hold on, I'll get a better look at this. Here we have the Cullinan 
the other Cullinan and the Range Rover. And then here we have the Khan Design Defender on the Khan wheels. Pretty cool. And in front of it, the GLS 600 Maybach. Uh, quite the selection of 4x4s here. There's about, wait, hold on, let's work this out. About half a million, half a million, 150,000, about another 100,000, and about a quarter of a million. So there's about 1.5 million pound in 4x4s just out of these five. So you will see a lot parked down here. A little bit further down, we've got other Range Rovers. We've got a BMW M2 Comp by the looks of it. Yeah, it is a competition. Uh, this is on Qatar number plates, gold wheels, little livery on it. This thing is awesome. We've got another Defender. There's plenty down here. I see an S-Class Coupe down there. We'll run down the cars down this street, all of them. There is a Urus coming in purple. I'll let this go past. As I said, non-stop cars down this street. It is every other car is something special. So there's plenty to see parked down here. Here is a C63, as I was saying, there's plenty parked down here. Here is an S-Class and just like that, we have a Ford GT and a 488 Pista. I meant it when I said this road is made for supercars. Uh, you do not see these too commonly, but here we are on a winter's afternoon in London. It's raining and we have two extremely track focused super slash hypercars. So yeah, that's pretty much London summed up, I think. Uh, we'll take a look at these two now, but you get the idea. It's ridiculous. I don't think I need to say much. Obviously, Ford GT, 488 Pista, quite special, especially this time of year. You don't normally see things like this. Uh, it's probably the best thing we're gonna see today. So yeah, that's, that's that done. Pretty ridiculous. As well as that down here, there's some other rare cars that people don't really take notice of. Uh, G-Wagon Cabriolet here. This is pretty rare. You don't normally see those. Uh, we'll take a look at that now. You don't normally see those at all. Another thing down here that I thought was pretty cool is the G63 here with the number plate 400 400. A very, very good number plate. Not sure whether that's from the UK or not because it might be four and then two O's as opposed to zeros. Um, I don't think it's from Qatar, but it's, it's a great number plate nevertheless. And we'll just take one more quick look behind the Bentley Continental GT at the two road legal track hypercars, the Ford GT and the 48 Pista. Absolutely nuts. Well done to the owners for actually driving them in weather like this. So wrapping up Mount Street, that was everything that was parked down Mount Street. Uh, behind me, we have a Maybach parked up, if it'll focus, just there. Um, and just after that, we have this hotel that is on the corner. Um, a lot of people know this one. It's the one with the big fountain out the front. Uh, do not make the mistake of sitting on that, thinking it is a bench. It is basically a lake. Um, it's about three inches deep of water on the top, so don't make that mistake. But um, yeah, so this hotel is always worth a check as well. Uh, plenty of cars around at all these spots. Um, it's, just, it's just worth checking because you never ever know. I'm gonna say that over and over again. You never know, you don't know what you're gonna find. And it's worth checking all these places because you might find something special like a Ford GT. And that's pretty much my day made, I think. We'll show you a few uh, other spots in Mayfair, as I was saying, and we'll find another couple of spots where cars normally park, but that'll probably be pretty much it for today uh, in terms of cars, because that is pretty much the best we'll see. So after Mount Street, it is pretty much essential to check out Berkeley Square. Um, it is a large grass centered square, uh, parking all the way around it. Again, so somewhat guaranteed to see some cool cars. Um, you've got the Ferrari dealership over behind me. Uh, you've got the Bentley dealership and tucked around the corner is the world's smallest car dealership. But the reason it is small is because it is the dealership of Bugatti. So we have the Bugatti dealership. So if you come to London and you want to see a Bugatti, uh, one of those is pretty much guaranteed. Um, if you want to see Ferraris, uh, Rolls Royce, Bentley, there are dealerships over there for that as well. 
Um, as I said, you've got cars parked up all the way around this square. Um, it, it's busy around here, so you will you will see stuff around here. But yeah, that's my uh, that's my next spot. This area here, Berkeley Square. So yes, as I was saying, here is the Ferrari dealership. They have a Ferrari Roma and a 296 GTS, the new convertible model. There is a X6M and the new Mercedes SL parked out the front, Cabriolet. Uh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, you take a turn just down that turning next to Bentley and on your right, you will see a Bugatti dealership with always one car inside. Uh, the glass on the doors is ever so slightly misted up. So you do have to peek through the middle to see. But um, yeah, you will see a car down there. So once you've done Berkeley Square, you've basically got two options. Well, three really. You can turn around and head back to Mount Street and restart all over again. Or you can head down that way. There's a, uh, a Tesco down there. And then it brings you straight out to a couple of other hotels and back to the Dorchester uh, from memory. And then the third option, the one that I tend to go for, is going down this street here where there is a fairly large hotel. And then it slowly loops you back around to Knightsbridge and you start all over again. That is basically what car spotting is, if you couldn't tell from those three options, is it's basically do that route and do it again and again and again until you get bored, find a road that you've been successful on, sit there for 20 minutes, see what you see. If you see a lot, stay there for longer. If not, move on. But yeah, that is about it. If you find this sort of thing interesting, then it's a great day out. But I can see how it would get boring for people that aren't that into cars. But there is great shopping down here and everything. This is more of a day out for for car people if you're doing it specifically for this. But there's loads of nice restaurants, there's loads of shopping, so you can do it for a date with your other half, or you can just go out for the day and see what you can see around here, as well as checking out the shops. You've got Harrods, Selfridges, plenty of places to go. Um, yeah, that's about it really. I'm gonna head down to the hotel that's down there, um, have a little check. If there's nothing there, I'll let you guys know and we'll end off the video there. If there is stuff there, I'll show it to you. And yeah, that's about it. So let's get down there, see what there is, and uh, yeah, wish me luck. So straight away, just like that, we have a Ferrari 812 Coupe. Um, I'm not even at the hotel yet. I literally filmed that last bit of video there. And straight away, we had a Rosso Corsa 812 with lovely wheels. And yeah, I mean, can you complain? It's lovely, it's beautiful, matches my, uh, matches my can. Rosso Corsa Coca-Cola. Um, big fan of these. I think they've aged really well. I think the new era of Ferrari is going to age just as well, but I think these look particularly lovely. Um, yeah, you just can't complain about that rear end. Look at that. And when these have got a, a modified exhaust, they sound particularly fantastic. You get a lot of that as well. Casual. Here's a, uh, here's a weird one for you all. The uh, fairly new company to the UK, BYD, uh, electric car manufacturer. Uh, they've just opened up this dealership in Mayfair. Um, the cars actually look pretty fantastic. Um, I'm a fan. Uh, I'm slowly getting into all these new electric cars that are coming over to the UK from China, I believe this company's from. They've got a few models you can see at the back there. A nice four x four, a uh, smaller sedan, and then this, the flagship model. Uh, I don't actually know the name of it. I'll pop that up on the screen. But yeah, these are pretty good looking cars and I think the range is pretty good as well. So today's very last spot is this hotel here. I should mention there is a JLR dealership there and a Rolls Royce dealership right next to me here. But the most successful spot of today, I thought the Ford GT was gonna be the best thing we saw today, but apparently not. 
Um, we have at this hotel a Land Rover Defender, lovely. We have a Ford Mustang Mac E, lovely. An Aventador, lovely. But it's what's behind the Aventador that is particularly special. I don't know if you can tell what that is, but we will go and take a closer look now. So here is the Lamborghini Aventador with some sort of body kit on it and wheels looking lovely, but it's what's behind it. This is what I was talking about, the Bugatti Veyron that is particularly special. Uh, you don't see many of these very often at all. This one is in a lovely spec. It's stunning. We'll take a closer look around it now, but obviously you all know about this car. I don't need to tell you all about it. Very, very special. Very, very good looking, even after all these years. I love these. I thought I may as well give the Aventador some love as well. This is an Aventador Roadster on a body kit of sorts. There are so many that I don't know which body kit it is, but I think that is a Mansory wing and I couldn't tell you what company the wheels are made by. But as you can see with the large number plate, this car is from KSA or just sort of Dubai, Arab Emirates. It's lovely. This color as well is awesome. Lovely light blue with cream interior. Uh, it's a roadster, as I said, the carbon uh, two-piece roof. It's removable manually, stored in the front boot, very practical. Uh, I love this car, you can't beat it, unless you own a Veyron or a Brabus G-Wagon. <laughs> but I do love the Aventador, classic London. that probably only I would notice while we're looking at this Veyron. Here we have a Lincoln. Don't normally see those in London. Absolutely huge. Really cool. But I think this is the perfect example of how you should be coming London, even when the weather is like it is, even when the time of year is like it is. Uh, it's just worth it. You, you really don't know whether it's Christmas, raining or summer, hot what you're gonna see and I definitely don't think it's worth giving up when it gets to these sorts of times of year because well look proof is in the pudding it is unbelievable what you can see around London any time of the year any street you just have to take the chance and it pays off because wow look at this car the spec is unbelievable as I said chrome and black wheels this sort of like dark gray and blue rear section polished chrome front it's lovely i will tell you what color the interior is but the windows are pitch black as this is not a uk registered car and there is no laws on the window tint um it, it's unbelievable i mean there's not much more i can say about this other than well look at it um i'm trying to stay out of the traffic here it's hard to film this I'm right up against a barrier, but yeah, you get the idea. I won't keep nattering on. They're mental. And just as I say that, the uh, the bodyguard arrives in the Brabus G-Class. Uh, quite the pair. It's, it's madness, it's nuts. For anyone interested, by the way, the street that the Veyron was just on is Stratton Street. Uh, that is the street with this hotel on it. Very popular for the supercar owners, as you can see. Uh, always worth a check, definitely. Um, as with everywhere, it's just worth it. Check it out. Next to Stratton Street is the new Rolls-Royce Spectre. Uh, big fan of these. Just came out, the first fully electric Rolls-Royce motor car. Uh, big fan. Looks good with the uh, weird thing I noticed, the standard pinstripe that is sort of known on Rolls Royces, normally on the side, is actually on the top of the car, which is a new thing that I've never noticed before. But yeah, interesting. I like these, I think. Shame it's electric though. V12's better. Obviously the proper Rolls Royce here, the Rolls Royce Phantom long wheelbase, the black with the red pinstripe, red leather, uh, the pinstripe famously done by hand, which is pretty cool. Uh, the dealership is actually beautiful. Uh, when it's open, please come in and have a look. They're very, very welcome in. They are more than happy for people to come in and take photos, etc. Uh, definitely worth a look when it is open, as I said, because it is closed now. This is 
it's basically the end of the line when you want to start turning yourself around, restarting that route that I've shown you today. This is uh, Berkeley Street connected to Berkeley Square. You'll know you're on the right street because you will see the Lotus dealership. Uh, outside the Lotus dealership, by the way, I thought it'd probably be best to mention the new uh, Lotus Elytra, uh, the new Lotus uh, Emira, that's the word. Uh, the new Emira and the new Amoeba. Um, very cool cars. I haven't seen the new saloon in person yet, so that's pretty cool to see. Um, I've seen the Amira and I've seen the uh, uh, Vetra, Electra, Electra, Elytra. I don't know. I've seen the four by four. Um, Lotus are doing great things at the minute. Um, I really can't see a reason why they won't be more successful in the future with these three cars. Um, I think they're going to do amazingly in the future. special one that I've never seen before. This is the brand new 2023 4x4 squared with a Brabus G-Wagon in front of it as well. I've never seen one of those before. Very, very excited to see that. Very cool. So everyone, that is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. We are back where we started on Sloan Square, just about to get back on the train on the underground and head back to where I live, which is many miles away. So quite a long train journey ahead. Hopefully not as long for you when you guys come down here. But yes, thank you very much for watching. As I said, really appreciate it. Appreciate all the views on the most recent videos of the car reviews. Gonna do more vlog style videos like this in the future. Uh, and then a mix of the car reviews as well. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys all in the next video. Hope you enjoyed, see you later.